Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mark and I thank you so much for coming by today on this rainy, wet Saturday afternoon in August. It is pouring outside and there's nothing better for me than a rainy Saturday when all my chores are done and I get to spend a little bit of time inside being lazy and being creative. And that is my plan for today. So like I said, there's nothing better than on a rainy Saturday afternoon after you've done all your work and all your chores are done and you get to spend some quality time. For me, it's in my studio, either being creative or just cleaning up and getting things organized. And today I thought was a perfect day to pick up on my last video where I showed uh, a little drying rack that I made uh, for my paintbrushes. And I wanted to show that again and maybe do a little how-to video on how to recycle this little cardboard tissue box into a drying rack where you can hang your brushes upside down and have them dry properly instead of having water get trapped in the ferrule. This will help preserve your brushes a little bit longer and I hope it's helpful for you and it'll be a little quick tutorial and hopefully it'll be fun as well. So come on along and we'll check this out and um, thanks for coming by. You're going to need two tools for this project. You're going to need a cutting edge like a uh, an X-Acto or a pair of scissors and you need some kind of a marker like a Sharpie or even a ballpoint pen would work. Nothing complicated here. You're also going to need an empty box of tissues. Now I got this at the grocery store for about a buck and these are great because you can use them to store markers, brushes, whatever you want in there. But for this demonstration we're going to do the drying rack. Now I'm going to use the Sharpie to draw some dots here and these dots are actually going to be the brush holes for later and we'll get into that in just a moment. Now you can do any pattern you want. I just like going on the outsides because that's the way I like it. You could do the inside, you could do the whole box, whatever, <laughs> whatever makes you happy. Now comparing to the old one that I had, you can see I didn't really make any kind of a template or anything. I just cut it out and eyeballed it and just kind of made it for myself. It might be more important to you to have a nice looking drying rack. So here for this demonstration, I'm going to mark off these little flaps that I'm going to pull out later. I'm going to cut these and pull these out. And so you want to make sure to the left and right of these flaps, you have enough space to make the legs of your drying rack. And you want them to be strong so the whole thing doesn't fall over if they're too thin. Now the point of this drying rack is to keep the water from forming and collecting in this ferrule, this metal piece of the paintbrush. Because when it does, it can actually compromise the glue in there and loosen your bristles and make them fray or even fall out. And you'll lose your paintbrush over time if too much water gets collected in there, especially if there's pigment or paint in there. So anyway, now I'm going to get to the part where I'm cutting out these flaps. It's very simple. You just got to be careful because if you're using an X-Acto blade, it is sharp. And I just want to give you the heads up not to cut yourself. I've done that before and it's not fun. So just being very careful, we're just going to simply cut out these little panels. And uh, you can see there's some strong glue that they use to make these boxes, which is why I like these boxes, because they're actually very strong. You just have to make sure, again, that the legs are wide enough to keep this thing you know, sturdy. So when you put your brushes in there, it's not gonna just fall over. So once you get through this part of it, you'll notice that uh, as I try to rip this out, I come across the plastic here. So I'm just gonna use my scissors, my handy scissors, and cut these out. And this is where you'll start to see the legs of the drying rack. So once I cut this here, and I cut the other ones, you'll start to see there's the, the legs are starting to show up and now you can start to see your drying rack take form once I get all this junk out of here. And there we have our drying rack with the four legs. And you might have to trim out a little bit. Again, you can design this however you want. You can make this look real pretty. You can paint it and do whatever you want. But now I'm going to go to the top of the box and I'm going to start with these brush holes. Now what I'm going to do is put a little plus sign or an X. I'm just going to cut these little plus signs or X's into here. Now a smaller brush means a smaller X. A larger brush means a larger X, obviously, because when you push the brush through, you're going to be pushing into the cardboard, and the smaller means the more tighter it's going to fit the brush. And so once I get through all of these, again, you can make these in any pattern you want. It doesn't matter. But uh, once I get through all of these holes, then I'm going to start and push my brush through the opposite side. So I'm going to go from the underside, and uh, you can see the little X there, and I'm just going to push the brush right up through it. And once it comes up through, I'll pull it through the other side, right there. And I want to bring the brush about halfway up. It's not going to hurt the brush at all. 
And uh, you don't want to pull it up too far because you don't want the ferrule to touch the cardboard. But you can see that the brush is now going to hang upside down and the water that collects in the ferrule is actually, gravity is going to pull the water down slowly and it's going to wick out into the air. Now wicking is like kind of when you're sweating through your armpit <laughs> in your t-shirt and the sweat comes through the t-shirt, it wicks out to the outside of the t-shirt and then evaporates into the air. And that's what I'm trying to do to preserve my paintbrushes. Now you can see with my old rack here, it still works just fine. I keep these things for about a year at a time and they're just fine. They keep for a long time and uh, you can see the holes, they, they stay sturdy and they, they keep a grip on the paintbrush for quite a while. And once they start to get too loose, I just throw it away and I just make a new one. So the only thing remaining is just these pieces that I cut out. And depending on how detailed and how, you know, decorative you want to make this, uh, you might not have that much left over. So I'm just going to recycle this little piece into a little drawing. <laughs> and uh, I will consider this a successful demonstration, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's one of those things that I like to save money, I like to recycle, and I don't like to waste stuff. But I also want to keep my brushes around for a long time. And this has been a great way for me to keep my brushes safe and clean and... Uh, you know, saving some money and saving the environment in the process. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you decide to do this, then uh, go for it. I, I say, why not? If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. And uh, hopefully you're doing well and it's not so rainy where you are. And you have a great day. Thank you so much. God bless.